Hi guys, Robby46 here, welcome yourselves back to MotoGP20 on the Xbox One X. We're doing 100% race distance around Aragon for the second time. And we're going to be talking about the Grand Prix that happened at the weekend. So if you've not seen any of the races for all three categories, I suggest turning the video off now, watching that and then coming back. Because we are going to be going into spoilers. So, yes I'm using Take Nakagami. And the reason for that is because... I knew I wasn't going to have any time on Sunday or Monday to actually record the gameplay for this video. So I tried to predict it. So I recorded it on Saturday after qualifying. Nakagami was on pole position and he's been go he was going well all weekend. Um, but we'll, we'll speak about what happened when we get to MotoGP. But we're going to start with Moto3. So we're not going to do it in the order that they've done it at the weekend. At the weekend they ran it with Moto3 first, MotoGP second and Moto2 third. I'm going to start with Moto3. Then I'm going to go on to Moto2. And MotoGP will be the last category that we talk about today. So we're going to do it in order that they usually run. Not the order that they did actually run at the weekend. So... Moto3, I'm literally running out of things to say for Moto3 because their races are just hectic all the time and Sunday was no different. It was a, uh, a very hectic race. Um, there's a few people that had to take the long lap penalty straight away. One of them being um, the Husqvarna rider which had to take it last week as well with John McPhee. McPhee didn't have to uh, take it this week but Alonso Lopez did. I was trying to find his name then I could, it completely went from my head. So Alonso Lopez had to take the long lap penalty. He actually decided to do it on lap one and get it out of the way which was you know a good decision because although you're going to lose a lot of places you're not necessarily going to lose too much time if that makes sense because um, you're going to come back into a big group of riders because they were all really close together. Um, yeah, it was a crazy race as always. And uh, it was Raul Fernandez who was on pole position again. Um, he tried to get to the front straight away, stay in the lead and try to lead and pull away. Didn't work out for him. He had uh, Messia and Arenas and Vietti and Darren Binder and John McPhee all come through and battle with them. Um, John McPhee didn't actually get the best of starts but he did fight his way back to the leading group. Uh, he didn't have to take the long lap penalty this time like I said but um, yeah, managed to fight his way towards the, the front group. Albert Arenas was trying to do a smart race again um, I know it didn't work out for him in the first Aragon race. He pretty much got mugged in the last couple of corners. Um, he's trying to keep his powder dry. Obviously, he is fighting for the championship at the moment. Um, and he needs to try and make sure that he is finishing ahead of his main rivals. And uh, that's pretty much what he's trying to do the whole race. And uh, he did at, at one point try to get into the lead and, you know, try and try and break him. But it, it wasn't working. As soon as that happened, people were getting back in front of him. Um, Messia was looking very, very strong. His Leopard Honda is really quick on the straight. I mean, we know that the, the Leopards uh, have always pretty much been a quick bike. But, um, yeah, he was... Um, fast just like last time where he, he won last time out um, a bit further back you had uh, people like Foggia Carlos Tate and Migno all fighting like mid pack uh, Antonelli was a bit disappointed again outside the points um, on Chu not on Chu um, Agura Although Onchu did actually have a, a good race battling inside the top 10. But Ayogura, who is second in the championship, he had a better round this time. Only slightly, though. He has been struggling the last few races. Um, but he, he managed to find a bit extra this weekend. But still not enough to, to be able to, to trouble 
Albert Arenas or even John McPhee um, in the front group. So still struggling, but um, yeah, his, uh, his points are just not really where they need to be right now. He's not doing damage limitation. He's, he's really he should be trying to, to beat Albert Arenas you know, every time to try and cut the lead, but it's just not working out for him at the moment. So he was, uh, like I said, doing better than what he did last week, but still not an ideal situation for him. Uh, but at the front, you know, you have people chopping and changing throughout the whole race. It was, you know, corner after corner. Sometimes they're going into a corner four abreast. And it was just an insane race. You had Vietti, who managed to get towards the front at one point as well. He led for a little bit. And then you had uh, Sasaki come through as well. And uh, Kaito Toba, uh, he came through to, to fight with the, the front group. Um, they did manage to shuffle Vietti and McPhee back through the pack. Uh, they ended up outside... Uh, the podium they they ended up off the podium but um Darren Binder as well he was looking good to begin with but again he got shuffled back a little bit towards the end of the race um Tony Arbolino he was back after missing the, the previous race uh due to having to self-isolate but it was good to see him back he was battling in the lead for a little bit but again a, a few of these riders did ha uh, end up getting shuffled back towards the uh the back of the the group um mid mid race towards the end of the race as i previously said uh alonso lopez did have to uh, take the long lap penalty but he done a good job at uh, getting back inside the points throughout the whole race uh, so it's good for him um tasuki suzuki and sergio garcia had a uh, coming together uh, towards the end of the race and they both ended up crashing out those were the only two non-finishers. So, um, you know, considering the amount of close racing we get in Moto3, uh, the fact that we only had two DNFs in the whole of the race is uh, pretty good going, to be fair. I mean, we didn't actually have that many DNFs last week in all three categories either. But, um, yeah, just the two in Moto3 this week. Um, but, yeah. Messia, he managed to pull out of the bag again and he managed to take the win. He won from uh, Sasaki, who came second place. He got Tech 3's first ever uh, podium in Moto 3. So, really good to see the Japanese rider come through and uh, look really strong. His fellow compatriot got third place, Kaito Toba, on the Red Bull KTM. Again, good to see him back on form. We have seen flashes of. Uh, you know, brilliance from, from Tober in the past. But, uh, yeah, it was good to see him back on the podium. So that was your top three. Masia won from Sasaki in second and Tober in third. And uh, it was that close that Sasaki was half a tenth of a second over the line behind Masia. So literally, if the, the line had been, you know, a little bit further up, then maybe Sasaki might have been able to, uh, to get through. But... Uh, yeah, he didn't quite manage it, and uh, Kato Tabor was just a tenth and a half behind um, Messia in the lead, so that's how close it was. Two tenths behind the leader was Albert Arenas. Like I said, he just missed out on the podium. Um, he got mugged again, not as bad as he did last weekend, but um, yeah, he just got shuffled back just when he didn't want to, and... Uh, you know, going into the penultimate corner, he was in fourth and he couldn't really find a way back through. So, uh, fourth place for him, but that's not too bad because he did finish ahead of his main rivals. Uh, one of them being uh, Vietti, who ended up in fifth position. Uh, John McPhee was sixth. Um, Dennis Onchu on the other Tech 3 Red Bull KTM was seventh. Uh, just put it into perspective... Um, Dennis Onchu in 7th place he was literally half a second behind the leader Masia over the line so that's how close the the, uh, the leading group was and then 8th position was Darren Binder so at a, a semi decent result for Binder I think he was expecting to, to be able to, to fight for the podium for the whole race he did fight for it for a little bit but like I said he did get shuffled back towards the end of the race Ayugura he was ninth, slightly better from Agura, but unfortunately 
not where he needs to be, especially when all of his championship rivals um, are finishing. You know, not just one place ahead of him, but a few places ahead of him. So, still not where he needs to be. Um, Tony Arbolino on his return, he finished down in 10th position. Alonso Lopez, like I said, he had that uh, long lap penalty on lap one. He finished in 11th place, so he got some points. Raul Fernandez finished down in 12th place, so despite the fact that he led for a little bit, he did unfortunately get shuffled all the way back to 12th. Uh, Philip Salach finished in 13th place, and you had uh, Rodrigo in 14th. He led for a little bit as well. Um, yeah, 14th place for him, just in front of his teammate Jeremy Alcoba in 15th place. So that is your point scoring positions. Jeremy Alcoba, the final point scoring position. Then we go to 16th place for Dennis Fodger. Then we've got uh, Carlos Tate in 17th, Mino in 18th, Fanati in 19th, Nepa in 20th, Barry Boltus in 21st, Antonelli 22nd. Yamanaka in 23rd, Dupasquai in 24th, Yuki Kuni 25th, Pizzoli in 26th, Powi 27th, and Koffler in 28th place. So, uh, yeah, that was the race results. Now, the overall championship standings, uh, Albert Reynas extended his lead a little bit more now. So, he is on 157 points. He is 19 points ahead of Ayogura, so it's still not a complete disaster for Ayogura. He's still second in the championship. He's still only 19 points behind, which is less than a whole race win's worth of points. So, you know, if Ayogura come, comes out swinging at the next race at Valencia and say he ends up winning the race and, you know, Arenas has a bad day or worse, um, ends up with a DNF, then, you know, it's all going to change again. So... It's not completely over for Agura, but he definitely needs to find something for the last three races. Vietti is still in third. He's actually just one point behind Agura now, so Vietti is 20 points behind Arenas. Uh, that double win from Messia has jumped him up two positions to fourth. He's only 24 points behind, so you've still got the top four all under a whole race wins of points together, so... It's still all to play for at the moment. And like I said, a couple of bad results for one of them. And they will be completely out of it. So the next race is going to be critical. Um, Tony Arbolino, he's dropped a position to fifth place. Now he's 36 points behind. John McPhee has dropped a position now to sixth place. He's 38 points behind. Then you've got uh, Fernandez in seventh. Darren Binder, he's moved up to eighth now. 67 points behind. And Taksuki Suzuki has dropped a position to 9th, 74 points behind. So that was Moto3. Um, we're going to go on to Moto2 now, which was actually the final race of the day. But um, we're going to speak about it now and we're going to save MotoGP for last. So Sam Lowe's starting on pole position. Um, been going well all weekend again and was showing pretty much in every session that he had the pace even in morning warm-up he was like half a second quicker than anyone else so uh he he wanted to uh to show everyone what he could do um something on pole position and uh, oh boy did he do that uh on lap one we did have a coming together between Casma daniel and uh, thomas Luti. so they unfortunately crashed out and uh didn't get to remount and get going again but, um, yeah, a bit unlucky for Luti, but he was out of it. Still not good for the Sky Racing VR46 team. Um, Marini, although he had a, had a better race than, than the last weekend where he crashed out at uh, the first race at Aragon. He, uh, he did manage to finish this time. He did finish in the points, but... Um, yeah, it's all starting to unravel for him at the moment. You know, first half of the season, you could pretty much say that he was going to, you know, pretty much take the title. But it's just all changing again. It's a bit like MotoGP. It's all changing, you know, race by race. And just when it looks like someone's getting a bit of momentum, they have a DNF or they have a crash and get a little bit injured. 
and then start struggling a bit and it's just yeah moto 2 is uh, been pretty crazy this year as well and uh, just speaking of moto 2 uh, American fans can be happy that uh, Cameron Bobier has actually been announced and signed for the American Moto2 squad for next season. So uh, Bobier will be moving over from uh, American Superbikes to Moto2. So uh, that's going to be interesting to see how he gets on next season um, and see how he gets on at uh, World Championship level. But back to Moto2 and Sam Lowe's. Got, well, from, from pole position into the lead and he just pulled away. That was pretty much how Lowe's race went. He just showed his speed and he, he didn't just pull away, he dominated the race on Sunday. He, uh, we, we knew that he, he was you know, quite a bit quicker than everyone else throughout the whole weekend, even in warm-up, like I said, he was half a second quicker than second position. And yeah, he just dominated. It is great to see Sam ride in, you know, such a good form. I know that, you know, a lot of people give him stick and that, but he is a world-class rider. He's, you know, he's, he is a world champion. He's a world super sport champion. And he beat Keenan Swafalugu, which is like, you know, one of the most successful uh, super sport, world super sport riders ever and uh, Sam beat him fair and square. So, uh, yeah, to beat Sofawuglu. I can't even say his name at the moment. Sofawuglu. <laughs> Something like that, anyway. Um, so to beat him when uh, he was pretty much at his best as well is uh, no mean feat. But, uh, yeah, Lowe's back on form and uh, well and truly back in the championship as well. So, uh, yeah, Sam just got his head down and just chipped away and the thing is as well he didn't actually look that fast because he looked that smooth he didn't look like he was going that quick but he was because he was pulling away from um the rest of them at uh, quite a rate not to begin with um to begin with he was you know just uh easing away but um you know about a quarter of the way through the race he just started getting the hammer down and just pulling away with ease uh, Fabio Digi Antonio on the speed up. He was trying to keep up with Sam at the beginning of the race. But um, again, pretty similar story. Once he was in second place, he was never really bothered. Um, Bastianini done his best to try and get that second position, but he wasn't able to. The speed up of uh, Digi was able to look after its tyres well, and he was just able to uh, stay in second position. Um, Obviously using Lowe's as a marker for as long as he could until we could no longer see Lowe's. Um, but yeah, good good ride from Digi in second place. And Bastianini, you know, he's fighting for the title as well. And uh, he's been super consistent this season. So uh, to see him in third position. And again, similar sort of story. But he was fighting with um, Remy Gardner for a little bit for, uh, for, for third position. And trying to... To obviously overtake him, but uh, Gardner was, you know, putting up a good fight. But eventually, Gardner had to succumb to uh, Bastianini's attack, and the Beast managed to uh, to pull away a little bit and uh, secure that third position. But Remy Gardner, again, pretty decent result for him, um, fighting for fourth position. Um, Marco Bezzecchi, it's all going wrong now. We saw him crash out of the lead of Aragon. Uh, last weekend at uh, the first Aragon race and uh, unfortunately for him he crashed out of this race as well but he wasn't anywhere near the front he was struggling all weekend and yeah wasn't really where he should have been and yeah just ended up crashing out so two DNS for him which has really you know hindered his title chances um, we had Hector Garzo, who was uh, quite far up at one point. He was fighting with the likes of Jake Dixon and Jorge Martin and uh, Jorge Navarro for, you know, they, they were fighting for fifth place at one point, and Hector Garzo was in that group. But unfortunately, he ended up crashing out uh, uh, towards the end of the race. Um, his teammate as well, Lorenzo Baldazzari, with just a handful of laps to go. Uh, Baldazzari was inside the points, probably one of the best um, showings we've seen of Baldazzari for quite some time. 
and unfortunately for him he ended up uh, decking it and uh, crashing out as did Edgar Pons as well and also Stefano Manzi who actually got in front of Luca Marini at one point and uh, yeah was uh, pulling away and trying to catch Joe Roberts and then he ended up crashing out as well but talking about uh, Luca Marini he did manage to fight fight back he did drop to uh, I think it's about 13th from 14th position at one point but he did manage to fight his way back through um, to, get, to get some semi decent points but um, yeah it's just not going his way at the moment and you know three races to go it's going to be a very very tough three races for all the riders that are fighting for the championship because they can't afford a mistake they've got to make sure that they you know stay safe away from racing as well and don't put themselves at risk of you know catching the virus because if they do that then that's going to be the championship done because they're, they're going to miss at least two races and there's only three races left so they need to be smart about it and uh, just you know be as safe as possible away from racing as well as obviously during the races as well Jake Dixon it was another decent job from Jake he didn't quite have the uh, the pace to um, get the same result as last weekend but um, he was there or thereabouts and fighting with the likes of Jorge Martin and Navarro like I said at one point as well with um, Hector Garza but um, yeah it was, it was good to see him up towards the sharp end as well um, but yeah like I said Sam Lowe's he ended up finishing the race and winning it by 8.5 four seconds just a, a dominant showing from Sam Lowe's and uh, yeah it's not that often we get to see someone win a race by over eight seconds and uh, yes yeah, good to see Sam in a really good form that's three races on the trot that he has won now so um yeah fantastic stuff uh, Fabio Di Antonio, good race from him. Like I said, he did secure that second position. He was pretty much in second for the whole race. Uh, Bastianini came home in third, so that was your podium. Lowe's in first, Digi in second, and The Beast in third. Remy Gardner, he came home in fourth position. Jorge Navarro in fifth. Uh, Jorge Martin in sixth. Jake Dixon in seventh place. Augusto Fernandez in eighth. Marcus Ramirez in ninth. Joe Roberts in 10th place. So just behind his, his teammate, Marcos Ramirez. Um, 11th place was Luca Marini. So like I said, at least he scored some points this weekend. Um, and he did finish. But uh, just the five points for him, not ideal. Vierge finished down in 12th position. Just ahead of Sayarin in 13th. Nagashima in 14th. Simone Corsi was the last point scorer in 15th place then in 16th you had Bo Ben Snyder who was inside the points for quite a bit of the race he was actually fighting with Marini at one point but yeah he ended up down in 16th place ahead of uh, Bulliger in 17th Dana Porter 18th Chantra in 19th Schrotter in 20th Isdaiha in 21st Cardaluz 22nd and uh, B. Sikursky in 23rd and we've already been through the uh, the DNFs. Of quite a few DNFs this time. Uh, like I said, uh, Kazma Daniel, uh, Thomas Luti, Bezeki, Garzo, Baldazari, Pons, and Manzi. So that was a Moto 2 race. It wasn't the most of exciting of races. It was pretty spread out, especially, you know, the front four. Um, but it, it was good uh, for Sam Lowe's because that win has now moved Sam into the lead of the championship. So Sam Lowe's has moved into the lead on 178 points. He is now ahead of uh, the beast, Bastianini, in second place, who is now seven points behind Sam. So those two are very, very close. But, um, you know, a DNF and an 11th place for Luca Marini in the last two races has uh, put him in third position. But he is now 23 points behind so it's still not over for him of course you know anything can happen in the next three races and uh all all he needs to try and do is get three wins or at least beat bastianini and lowe's but um 
yeah, he's definitely on the back foot for now. Uh, even more on the back foot is his teammate Marco Bezzecchi in fourth place. He is now 48 points behind, so that is a big ask to try and uh, claw that amount back. But um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, fifth position is Jorge Martin. He's 73 points behind. And you've got Remy Gardner, who's now moved up to sixth place. Uh, he is completely out of it now, uh, mathematically anyway, 93 points behind. Nagashima, 7th, 97 points behind. Joe Roberts is down to 8th now, 98 points behind. And Thomas Luti in 9th, 106 points behind. So, mathematically, it's just between the top 4. Uh, but realistically, I think it's between the top 3. But, um, yeah, like I said, anything can happen. But um, if Sam can stay on the sort of form he's on now, then there's no reason why he can't continue winning races. And hopefully, uh, obviously being uh, a bit biased because I am British, but um, it would be good to see Sam take that title. He does like Valencia. Obviously, they're there twice. And he has a good record around um, Porto Mayo when he raced there in World Supersport. So that was Moto3 and that was Moto2. Now we go on to what was actually the second race of the day, but we're going to speak about it last. And that was MotoGP. And as I said at the beginning of the re the uh, re this race, this video, I chose Nakagami. I tried to predict Nakagami to win the race or at least get on the podium because as you can see, I'm third at the moment and had my ass absolutely handed to me in this race. Um miles behind the front two but i did do something stupid i did gamble with the hard rear tire and although the temperature was fine i just did not have the grip or the speed from it that i had with the uh, the suzuki when i used the medium rear tire so um yeah i was uh, trying to hold on to third and i was kind of hoping you know if nakagami doesn't win then at least hopefully he will get a podium and then my prediction will be kind of correct but Unfortunately not. So yeah, Nakagami did stick it on pole position. Um, but yeah, MotoGP, the race, it was, again, it, the the front three were fairly spread out, but we had some battles mid-pack downwards. It's just getting from bad to worse for Ducati as well. They tried to get Davizioso through q1 to go through to q2 because dovi had to go through q1 again they they basically got jack miller to give dovi a toe to see if they could bump davizioso up to the top two to get dovi through because obviously dovi's still trying to mathematically battle for the championship jack miller messed up the first lap and then unfortunately Although he did manage to make Dovi go a little bit quicker, because he was too busy trying to give Dovi a toe, he wasn't really going for his own lap time. And neither of them got through to Q2, so Miller, understandably, was very, very angry. Um, and yeah, it just didn't work out, and uh, the race didn't go too much better either, because at turn two, um, not Jack's fault, but Brad Binder just went straight into the back of Jack Miller, and they both went down so not ideal um jack didn't look too unhappy with binder obviously binder didn't mean to do it but he just went straight into the back of jack and not a lot jack could have done so they both went down but yes this guy on screen taka nakagami who was on pole position he, he got a good start he led through turn one he led through turn two he even led through turn three, but into turn four, he was slightly wide on the brakes and the front went, the front went on lap one, turn four, and down he went. So Nakagami, although he's leading, he unfortunately crashed out on lap one. And I'm going to say that is probably me, you know, might be my fault for uh, trying to predict him trying to win or even get a podium commentator's curse from me maybe but uh yeah it is what it is he did show really good speed throughout the whole weekend i was impressed by him 
I think everyone was to be fair um, and got on the you know pole position as well which is the first pole position since I think they said 2004 which was uh, Makoto Tamada but yeah unfortunately for Nakagami just penalty didn't fit the crime and uh, yeah unfortunately for him he went down so uh, yeah not good for him he has just re-signed for LCR Honda so he is officially there next season as well and I think that's good because he has really come on leaps and bounds this this season and you know ever since he's changed his style a little bit and uh, analysed Mark Marquez's data a bit more um, seriously it is definitely shown in the results that he's been getting so um yeah unfortunately for Nakagami he he went down and uh that was it Franco Morbidelli he managed to get into the lead and he managed to stay there Alex Rins kept him honest for most of the race um the winner last time out at Aragon Alex Rins on the Suzuki tried his best to to go with Morbidelli and to to fight with him and to try and you know take the double at Aragon but he wasn't able to. The Patronus Yamaha with Morbidelli on it. He was just able to uh, set a good good rhythm. And no one could get near him. Once he started easing away from Alex Rins. There wasn't really a lot that Rins could do. So uh, yeah unfortunately for him. Um, Rins wasn't able to get him. But you know. He, he did manage to secure a second position. Which was good to see. Um, Alex Marquez who again didn't qualify too well he did start making his way through the field picking people off uh, like he did last weekend um, he did actually opt for the hard front tyre much like his brother usually goes for the uh, the hardest front tyre uh, Alex went for it he, I think he was the only one who actually went for the harder front tyre um, but yeah it, it wasn't the, the similar result that he was expecting from last weekend um, he ended up unfortunately crashing out losing the front end uh, with 10 laps to go so yeah it wasn't the fairy tale second race that he was hoping for now, when I was trying to record this gameplay well before I stopped recording it I was in two minds I was thinking either Alex Marquez is going to win it or Nakagami is going to win it and after qualifying and seeing Nakagami on pole position and Alex down in, I think it's about 10th place. I was thinking, I think uh, Nakagami's got a, a better chance. But I knew that Alex Marquez was good at battling his way through the pack. And, uh, you know, getting um, second place last time out. So, uh, I nearly went for Alex Marquez. It wouldn't have mattered because neither of them finished. So, uh, both my predictions were wrong. Um... So yeah, Alex Marquez, like I said, he, he was going strong. He was, uh, I think he was in about fifth or fourth position when he ended up crashing out. So unlucky for him. Um, but yeah, he, he's been going well, you know, the last few races. So it's good to see him. Hopefully that hasn't dented his confidence too much. Let's not forget he is still a rookie, so he is going to make mistakes. But um, yeah, Valencia is next, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on there. At least Espargaro was uh, fighting as hard as he usually does. He done a uh, a, a bit of a questionable overtake on Davizioso down to turn one during the race. Um, he outbreak Dovi, but generally, if you're going to outbreak Dovi, it usually means you're outbreaking yourself as well, and that's exactly what happens. So he outbreak Dovi um, and basically. They both went off track through turn one because um, neither of them managed to get it stopped in time. But he did manage to get ahead of Dovi momentarily. Um, but unfortunately, the uh, the Aprilia gave up the ghost a bit later on in the race with, uh, yeah, three laps to go, I think it was. And um, that was it. Job done. The uh, Aprilia said no more. And that was it. It was a, a bit unfortunate for uh, Elish because he was looking fairly strong. Um, and we know the Aprilia isn't that great so to uh, to see it suffer a mechanical failure is not good and uh, Francesco Bagnaia as well unfortunately 
didn't finish the race on the Primark Ducati, so neither Primark Ducati is finished. Um, Johan Zarco, pretty good showing from him. Uh, he qualified pretty well, and he managed to uh, to to battle for um, a top five uh, position. Uh, Polo Spargo made his way past a, a few of the uh, the slower riders and uh, managed to get up to fourth position. Uh, he was too far uh, behind Joan Mir to be able to catch him. Um, but yeah, good to see that the KTM is a bit more competitive this time around. Even uh, Miguel Oliveira was uh, pretty competitive as well. Um, but yeah, when one Yamaha shows real good strength and actually goes on to win the race with Franco Morbidelli the other Yamahas struggle Fabio Quattararo got a pretty decent start but you know similar result to, to last weekend and similar situation he just started going backwards not as bad as last weekend he did finish inside the top 10 but yeah just you know drop in like a stone and through the last couple of corners, people were just able to, to turn their bikes better than him on the Yamaha and just get up, get up the inside of him, shove up the inside and uh, take take a position off of him. So I will say there were only 15 finishers this weekend. Um, so everyone who finished scored a point. Um, we had six DNFs as uh, we've already actually gone through them all with uh, Brad Binder, Jack Miller, Nakagami, Bangyaya, uh, Alex Marquez and Alicia Spargro all not finishing. Um, but yeah, Franco Morbidelli set a good pace, showed similar um, you know, uh, strength to what he showed at Mazzano when he won there earlier on in the season. And yeah, I think uh, you know, as soon as Morbidelli hits the front, it's not not easy for anyone to be able to go with him or get anywhere near him so uh yeah once he got into the lead he just chipped away at it and uh, he went on to win his second race of the season so good to see him up there and uh, win the race and that has actually put him back into the championship uh, contention which is uh, crazy to see suzuki's back on the podium a double suzuki podium with Alex Rins taking second place this time and Joanne Mir taking third place. Paul Spargro top KTM in uh, fourth position, so good result for Paul. Johan Zarco was the top Ducati, and let's not forget he is on last year's Ducati. He finished in fifth position, uh, just ahead of Miguel Oliveira, who was um, sixth place, and I mean just ahead of him. Uh, Oliveira was four hundredths of a second behind Zarco over the line. Maverick Vinales, he ended up down in seventh place, uh, just ahead of his Yamaha compatriot, uh, Fabio Quattararo, who ended up in eighth place. So at least Fabio got top ten and got some points. But it's still not going well at the moment. Ika Laquona, again, another rookie. Top ten result for him, ninth position great result especially when you look at the caliber of people he finished ahead of Danilo Petrucci 10th position Cal Crutchlow 11th Stefan Bradl 12th Andrea De Vizioso 13th Tito Rabat 14th and Bradley Smith the last point scorer in 15th place so Ika Laquona, the rookie on a KTM, finished ahead of both factory Ducatis, uh, a Repsol Honda and um, the LCR Honda of uh, Cal Crutchlow. So, uh, yeah, good on Laquona. So that was the result. Um, you know, it, it wasn't the most of exciting MotoGP races. Um, you know, we've had more exciting ones this year. But it was good to see. Interesting as well. And uh, not necessarily the result I personally thought we were going to get. Because the Yamahas haven't seemed to be that good around Aragon this season. Um, they're fine during qualifying. But we, we kind of see that 
throughout the whole of the season. The Yamahas are good on a one lap pace. Um, and yeah, on screen, I actually miscounted my laps. I thought I'd just finished. But I'd literally just started the final lap. So I um, ended up dropping back into the clutches of Dovi, who was in fourth place. Um, so yeah, I did mess up there. Um, but yeah, yeah, wasn't expecting a Yamaha victory, that's for sure. But good to see both Suzuki's back on the podium. Um, and yeah, Mir continues his consistency. So let's go to the championship standings now for MotoGP. Because with that third position, Joan Mir has now extended his lead over Quattawaro in second place to 14 points. So a Quattararo has lost out even more. Um, again, a little bit of damage limitation. It is going to be interesting to see what happens at Valencia. Quattararo needs to get back on form. He can't keep finishing down um, in like eighth place now. He needs to, to come back swinging for the last three races. But yeah, so Mir leads the championship on 137 points. Quattararo second, 14 points behind. Maverick Vinales in third is still only 19 points behind, so still not a complete disaster for him. Franco Morbidelli, with that win, moves up two positions to fourth, just 25 points behind now. So, you know, a whole race wins are worth of points behind. But yeah, he's uh, won two races now. Uh, Dovi has now dropped to fifth place. He's 28 points behind. Alex Rins is sixth. Uh, 32 points behind Nakagami 7th 45 points behind Paul Spargo 8th uh, 47 behind and Jack Miller in 9th 55 points behind so uh, you know I can kind of see what's going to happen I, I still think Mir is in for the chance of winning the title and I think he may do it by not even winning a single race because he's been that consistent this season and no one else has really been that consistent he could well and truly win the, the championship without winning a single race. But yeah, we got a week off and then it's all go for the final three rounds of the championship with uh, two races at Valencia and the final race at Porto Mayo. So uh, looking forward to seeing them and looking forward to seeing how um, all three categories go in the last three races and to see who's going to come up on top in all three categories. But that is it from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more content. I shall see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to stay safe and to wash your hands. See you.